Ja, glaube ich. So we've got another Seiko 90 model to test and this is the Peak Carbon and as the name suggests it's a carbon fibre stocked really lightweight stalking rifle and it's really really floats my boat because we say we do a lot of stalking and you, you know you do really appreciate how Seiko put together a fantastic hunting gun you know it's not just shooting at the back of a rifle range stuff you need to go and take it out hunting which is what we're going to do but let's run through a few of the, through a few of the features um, as we said it's a carbon fibre stocked stainless steel stalking rifle made to be used out out and about so you know eleva high elevated um, hill stalking or long you know, treks across uh, woodland or countryside and it only weighs 2.6 kilograms without scope and moderator obviously and the overall length is 40.25 inches which uh, which is absolutely fantastic uh, for essentially what we do a lot of here is woodland stalking so you want a nice compact um, rifle to actually uh, uh, use and maneuver around you have a 20 inch uh, fluted stainless steel barrel this is in 308 and it uh, has a 1 in 11 twist uh, rifling twist uh, so good for a you know, all bullet weights in 308 calibre, to be honest with you. And it is threaded with 15 by one uh, thread pitch. And it does actually come with a muzzle brake, but you know, here in England, we're shooting deer. We always put a sound moderator on. This is a Stalin, works very, very well. You'll see it in the tests uh, later on. Seiko take great pride in their rifle barrels and they're always very, very accurate straight out of the box. And that's because they use the cold hammer forge method. And this actually gives fantastic uniformity on not only the outside dimensions, but also the internal dimensions on the rifling. So it's very, very, very precise. And it not only gives you uh, a great consistency and concentricity to the bore, it also gives you a really, really good uh, longevity as well, because it's it kind of like uh, work hardens the actual internals of the bore. So your rifling and your throat is going to last for longer, especially if you're doing reloads and using quite hot powders. Um, it, with a shorter barrel, we tend to use faster powders. Um, well, I do anyway. Um, but there you go. That's 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 the um, the barrel. It's nicely fluted as well to reduce weight, uh, and overall, it's um, fantastic for the peak. It gives the uh, not only the the look you, you actually want, but also the weight saving for a, a lightweight stalking rifle, and it's also fully free floated. So even if you put a even if you put a a, a, mod, a bipod here and you're shooting off a bench you aren't going to get in interference with bounce uh, and destroying the harmonics on the barrel when you're actually shooting which is great so the stock is absolutely fantastic i like farmhole stocks but this i've got to say is an absolutely fantastic sporting stock it's uh, carbon fiber it's actually made in finland and it's actually uh, by the rtm or resin transfer molding system and what they have, they have a form and then they'll lay down like a 3D mesh of carbon fiber over it. So it's solid. It's lightweight, but it's solid. There's no hollow noise. So and that, it's a small little point, but it makes a lot of difference when you're out stalking. You don't want it to hit the brush and make a hollow noise or you tap against uh, your shooting sticks, you know, and the deer or whatever you're shooting can, can actually run off. And it's, it's done in the sporter style. It has a very nice comb here. You have a small molded in cheek piece. They do do a left-handed version as well. This is right-handed. Very nice intuitive palm swell. You have a slight, there's no checking on this, it's carbon fiber, but you have a slightly sort of textured finish. And I have to say, it is very, very grippy. I actually like it, I've, you know, we've actually been out stalking with this and we're up in Scotland, it's been raining, showers, you know, hot, cold, and it's, I've not had a problem with this whatsoever. As I said, it's a sporter type profile. Uh, it's fully free floated on the, on the barrel, which is very good. Length of pull is 14.25 inches which is great and that can actually be um, increased slightly because the trigger blade here is actually movable we'll go uh, backwards and forwards so we'll go for that a little bit later on um, and it's also being carbon fiber it's actually very very um, temperature stable so you know as you, if you go from hot cold climates or it's wet it's not going to warp it's not going to change your accuracy and you've got fantastic consistency and also, it absorbs recoil very well. I mean, the Frisk 308, we've been testing off the bench, and it really does soak up the recoil. And it's very, very good. A second shot is actually very fast, because it really does. You don't get much, much muzzle flip on that whatsoever. It's very, very nice. Anyway, the action, as you said, is the Model 90. And the changes here over the 85, I mean, the most obvious are you have the integral Picatinny rails here. 
uh, on the top, which makes mounting a uh, universal for any type of scope or night vision or thermal if you actually want to. Um, and also, if you can see here, it, it has been scalloped away on top of the bridge. And this does make loading in the field very, very useful. And we're out on stags, but there's lots of hinds around as well, and they're just coming into season. And when you're actually wanting to shoot, you know, three or four, you know, for culling or management purposes, you don't want to keep popping the magazine out. You can actually top up and you'll see on the, when I'm actually testing it on the rifle range, it's just very handy on the bench. You can just top up while I can keep taking the magazine out. So that's very, very nice. Also on the bolt, 60 degree bolt lifts. Seiko have such a fantastically smooth bolt action anyway. And it's a free bolt lug locking system with a fantastic area here on the back of the lugs, which really do mat in well. And you can actually feel them bed down into the abutments. So you get great concentricity and um, persistency there with a very smooth action, which gives you, you know, basically great accuracy out in the field. Also on this, on the 90, which is slightly different, you have a twin uh, plunger ejection system, which is taken from their uh, TRG or sniper or law enforcement. And it really does give a really positive and reliable ejection um, from the bolt mechanism. Very, very nice. There's a bolt indicator at the back that it's cocked, so a cocking indicator at the back here, uh, which is pretty normal. And the bolt release is via the um, uh, little lever here on the left-hand side of, of the receiver. Teardrop, bolt handle, just very, very nice, smooth action to use, very intuitive. Safety is your typical Seiko safety is normal. Straight, I'll cock it up here. Back is on. Can't pull the trigger, that blocks it. Can't open the bolt, but there's a little extra little uh, plunger here, push that down, you can open, open the bolt and take a, um, a cartridge out if you want to. Nice little feature to have if, if you actually want to use that. Going further down the magazine, as we said before, you can top load it if you want, but with Seiko, like on the 85, you have to push in on the magazine, and there's a little catch in front, and then it drops it. It saves you hitting a catch and dropping the mag, because if you drop, move the catch here, the mag won't drop, and you just push it up at the front, and it just comes out simple. Same to steel, fantastic, ultra reliable. And what I really like as well on these, and the 90s especially, is you have a great overall length here. There's a lot of space in the magazine. So for reloaders like us, you can actually reload your bullets long and match them to the, uh, the rifling and the throat in your barrel to get the absolute optimum accuracy. Trigger wise, this is fantastic. And I wanted to put one on this, hopefully they'll do a retrofit, maybe on an S20. I don't know if they'll do that or not. But they've actually, as you said, the trigger uh, blade is adjustable for, for um, front and back motion here. So you can actually adjust not only your length of pull, but also to optimize it in the hand for release for your, the pad or your, your trigger finger here. But you have a small hole in the trigger blade here and you have a five point trigger preset for your weight or sear weight on your, um, your trigger, which I think is fantastic. Now this fiddling around, getting it just right, what, what you want, you have five presets. So I've gone through this, I've actually used a Lyman um, trigger uh, gauge to actually test it. But on the first setting, which we use on the bench, it's the lightest so you can get the most consistent accuracy um, out of it. And that is set at two pounds and one ounces when we tested it. If you literally go through, click, click, click. Third setting, three pounds, two ounces. So that's what we use out in the field, so it's a little bit heavier. And then if it's really wet and it's rainy or you've got numb fingers, you can do it to the fourth setting and that's four pounds, one ounces. That's all on test. And that's just a fantastic little feature and you, and you will actually use it. I mean, I, I, I would definitely been using it. I think it's very, very good. And as we said, I mean, that's basically in a nutshell, um, the Seiko Peak Carbon, you know, and for us stalkers who actually go out and use it, you know, it is incredibly reliable, all stainless steel, carbon fiber, it's not gonna rust incredibly lightweight you know for old fogies like me now it's really nice to tout around in the field and as you'll see later on ridiculously accurate with lead and uh, lead free ammunition as well so anyway let's crack on we'll do the rifle test then we'll go out um, stag stalking and see how we get on right now we're going to uh, conduct the factory ammunition test we've got about eight different types of ammunition here from 123 up to 165 grain uh, lead free and non-lead free and first up are the new Hornaday International that uses a 125 grain uh, ECX with the flat met plat which I really like and hopefully you can see that the Seiko's are 90 have a really good um, length within the cartridge here so it easily fits you know especially a flat nosed uh, met plat on the ECX here very well and even reloads which we'll see later you know so you can actually load your bullets out a little bit longer anyway let's go and see how the carbon light uh, 
shoots at 100 yards. We'll do three shot groups and say eight different factory loads. Very mild to shoot, and that was 2911. Despite it's only 2.6 kilogram weight, but there's no recoil to that tool. That's that's partially due to the fact it's a fantastically ergonomic stock. Yeah, that's lovely. Cool, that's very nice. And that is oh, that's definitely that's a nice tight group. Excellent. Let's um crack on that. I mean, these have been shooting very well. These uh, ECXs. We're going to take them to Scotland uh, a bit later on and see if we can shoot some. Uh, some red stags out of them. Always remember off the bench is to push, push at the front of the uh, magazine and then do the clip on the Seiko 90 like this Seiko 85. It's a nice little feature, it saves the magazine popping out uh, when you're out and about and actually taking the gun out properly and you know testing it out stalking or you can actually load from the top, we'll show that later on. Right so these are Seiko's own game head and these ones I do like myself, these are 123 grain so we'll see how they shoot. Again, very mild to shoot. That was 2922. So you can actually see that. That's near the ball. Again, under an inch. I mean, you can't complain with that, can you? <laughs> right, so next up, we're going a little bit heavier. It's a 162 grain Seiko Power Blade, and that's a lead free round. And uh, being a proprietary uh, cartridge, it'll be very interesting to see the velocity and how it shoots in the peak. Well, that's a, and that's a 162, that's a pussy cat as well to shoot. Lovely, and what velocity was that? Uh, 2653. As expected, that's nice. And that's dead centre. Oh, look, that's touching. I think that's under an inch group of uh, lead free. Those power blades, warm, oh, please they shoot well because we're going to go and shoot some stags in Scotland hopefully next week. So, Right, another leg free round uh, and they are the new Gecko and that's a, uh, a 136 um, grain loading and these have been shooting very well, they're quite an economical lead free uh, loading and they've been shooting well in the other test rifles so I'd be interested to see how they compare to the uh, the Seiko power blade. So here we go. Oh yeah, a lot faster you can feel that. And that is 2807. But it is a 136 grain bullet compared to 162 grain uh, power blade. Slightly higher left. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you about the group in a moment. <laughs> it's interesting. Hopefully you see it on target on the uh, screen. It's a fly with a death wish. Yeah. Two and a half inch group. So that's interesting. So with the lead free at the moment, the Seiko power blade is up on top, which is great. And the Gecko doesn't like the Gecko, but that's fine. You know, that's why we test these factory. They don't always suit, you know, bullets don't always suit certain barrels uh, it's a valid test well right, next we're gonna have a little sort of head-to-head -head with the um, 150 grain uh, soft nose tipped uh, conventional ammunition and uh, first we'll have the Seiko and these are really nice these are the game head 150 grain and they always perform and expand very very well uh, if you don't have to use you know lead free bullets in your hunting area Nice 
adjustment velocity on that we had. 2815. Yeah, and those double plungers um, extract uh, ejectors on that bolt. It's lovely. I hope you can see that. Now it's dead centre, look at that. So also the trigger is fantastically light. This is on the lightest setting and you have five different settings we've said and it's fantastic just access through here. So when we go out stalking I'm going to put it to the uh, number three setting which is um, the medium setting. If you don't want it you know, ultra light when you're out stalking. But I, I love this feature on the Seiko 90. It's a new feature and I really, really do like it. Well, that's well less than an inch grip. That's fantastic. So again, that was 2797. Fantastic performance from the Seiko. So, um, well, actually, we'll show you. This next up, we've got to say the 150 grain. It's a Federal and it's their Power Shock. And because the new Seiko 90 has a cutaway top here on the, the action, you can just feed when you're out in the field or feed from the top. It's a really nice system. And it's as simple as that. So, you can load the magazine, you don't have to take the magazine out and refill it. If you're in a situation where you're, you're culling hinds or um, up in Scotland or does, row does, you can actually fill up from the top. You know, small features like that, if you actually take the gun out, you know, rather than shoot it in a, uh, yeah, at the back of a rifle range or anything, it's actually take it out and properly take it out hunting and stalking and a field test where you really are going to use the rifle. Little features like that, especially for me, make a lot of difference. Lining up here. That wind's actually picked up a little bit. I felt a little bit more recoil on that. That's interesting, the Federal. So that's 2746. Same point of impact as the uh, Seiko. Oh, it dropped down a bit. I think the Seiko's ahead at the moment. Yeah, no, it's an inch and a half group. So I think 150 grain Seiko game head, definitely better than the uh, Seiko Peak rifle. Right, and finally testing on the Seiko Peak in the factory, we've got the 168 grain TTSX Barnes. They always shoot very, very nicely. They're quite expensive um, bullets to actually purchase, but I'll be very interested to see how they shoot in the Peak, if they're better than those power blade. But, uh, so look. Right. Nice light recoil. 2623, that's that's normal. Oh, very low left. That's close together. Yeah, that's about just over an inch, so that's nice. Very nice indeed. And then finally we'll do the, uh, the Norma. And these are the 150 grain Eco Strike. And that's a, that's a nice bullet, an interesting bullet. And uh, I've had mixed results with them, to be honest, here out in different rifles, but I'll be interested to see how it compares to a 150 grain uh, standard lead cord bullet. on that for velocity. Oh, error, it's a shame. Let's try that again. Oh, it's bang in the centre. No, oh, error. That's a shame, I want to get velocity on this. I'll try it one more time. But the group's looking good. Two seven four one, and that is oh <laughs> two, you know, almost touching, and then one about an inch off. It's isn't that always a way of copper free? But I tell you what, that Seiko um, Peak with the factory ammo, love. I mean, you know, you you're going to use it out in the field, but off the bench, absolute pussy cat to shoot. Fantastic ejection, total reliability as you can see, and some really good accuracy with some of that ammunition.
Yeah, nice, fantastic. Well, that's, uh, well, first blood to the, uh, the new Seiko Peak uh, up here in Scotland with the uh, lovely little uh, red stag here, little staggy. Uh, the big stags, are, they're all woodland here at the moment, so you have to be very careful as you're manipulating and stalking through this wood. And they're roaring in the, in the, uh, the forestry behind us. Uh, so, but we're here today um, managing the herd, so we're, we'll take out a few of these youngsters and they'll be very good eating as well, so the landowner appreciates the venison. I've got to be honest with you, this is where the Seiko Peak really comes into its own. It's a fantastic lightweight rifle. And when you go through here, you can't take any chances with a deer because you can literally bump into it. So you need to crawl, manipulate, change shoulders and actually handle the rifle quite a lot. And this is so easy and, you know, and well, just, just so nice and easy to handle and shoot from any, any particular angle, uh, from, you know, from a tree or a tree or crawling or from a shoulder, etc. I actually shot it off sticks, carbon fiber stock and standing still, totally weather resistant. So you don't worry about the rifle, just carry on the, the stalk. And there you go, that's first blood to the Seiko Pig. I'm very pleased with it. So we're gonna grab him, take him back to the larder and uh, say the landowner should be very happy.